I'm gonna show you how to cook chicken and a brick. This is gonna be the best chicken you've ever had. The big thing about chicken is don't take it off the bone. It's really good if you leave it on the bone, okay? And the big thing about a brick is cover it with foil. You wanna make sure the foil is, uh, uh, the brick is clean and that's how you, you do it with foil, okay? So this is my brick and foil. Oh, I always do to not a quite big enough piece. And uh, so for the chicken, you could put it on a hardwood fire, a charcoal fire, or a gas fire. But I'm using an iron pan. Now, this is my chicken. It's an organic, free range, uh, air dried chicken. And I'm taking the fat that's uh, in the little ends of the skin and putting it in the compost. And now I'm gonna cut out the backbone. And you can tell it's a backbone because it runs from the neck to the tail, okay? This is the breast and this is the backbone. So I'm gonna cut out the backbone so I can flatten the chicken and, and grill it under a brick. At this point, you check to see if there's any little bits of liver on the inside of the chicken. Sometimes the chicken is, has some liver stuck to it. And could you get the butcher to take out the backbone for you? Of course you could if you bought it from a real butcher. But keep the bones on the chicken because it's the bones that have the flavor. It doesn't matter whether it's fish, meat, or chicken, the flavor is in the bone. Okay, now watch this. I'm turning my chicken over on it to flatten it out and I'm going to hit it with my hands. Just bang it to make it nice and flat. Okay, there's a beautiful looking chicken with its wings tucked under. I'm putting some olive oil and salt and pepper on it. And then I'm gonna put it in a hot iron grill pan. Maybe the grill pan has um, lines on it and maybe it doesn't. But that's because I'm too lazy to start my charcoal fire this morning. Okay, we've got salt, pepper, and chicken, and olive oil. Okay, here we go. So I've got a hot pan here, and I'm gonna turn my, look at this. I'm gonna grill flat chicken like this. Put a little more olive oil and salt and pepper on it. Why do you olive oil and salt and pepper the side you're not eating? It's still gonna add flavor to it, okay? And then, we cover it with a brick or two. Here's my brick and here's my other brick. Can you reuse the bricks? Definitely. Okay, chicken under a brick. If you're cooking this chicken indoors, be sure and turn the fan on. And, uh, and now I'm just checking it. I'm taking the bricks off and, I'm on, and I wa don't wanna lose the skin on the bottom of the pan. So I'm just making sure the chicken is loose before I turn it over with my tongue. Whoa, look at that, that looks pretty good. Two or three minutes on one side, two or three minutes on another side. And um, you just, just check it to see how it is. If you don't think it's, um, if you don't think it's uh, done and it's plenty brown, you can always stick it in a, a 400 oven to finish cooking. Okay, now I'm gonna make my salad. So what I did was I took a loaf of uh, Acme Levan bread and I broke it up into pieces and you could leave it out overnight to dry or you could stick it in a 250 oven for a few minutes to um, dry out. So I have dry bread. If I were a, a true Tuscan chef in the hills of Italy, I would probably use leftover bread. This is a really good use for leftover bread, okay? So um, now I'm going to, and it could be any kind of white bread or herb bread or any kind of bread. Okay, now I'm going to add the onions. These are onions that I chopped and they were, they were a little bit strong. So I ran some cold water over them so they won't turn gray. And so that kind of cuts a little bit of the strength of the, uh, of the, the flavor. And I put, so I'm dumping my onions in uh, it looks like a lot, but I like them. And now I'm going to put some salt in so the onions soften a little bit. And now I'm gonna show you how to do the tomatoes. This is the most important part. The reason you wanna make this dish in August is it's when you have wonderful heirloom, beautiful ripe tomatoes. 
and, um, and it's also the season traditionally for basil. And watch this. What I'm doing is I'm cutting the tomatoes with a bread knife over the bread. So any juices from the tomatoes are going to run down into the bread. And that's what I want. I want the juices and the seeds and all that wonderful flavor for my panzanella, Tuscan bread salad. Some people add black olives. Uh, some people, I've, I've seen people in the Tuscany add um, canned tuna fish to, make, to add protein to it. So th look at these, aren't these beautiful? These are, uh, this is a, called a brandy wine tomato. And of course the best is to grow your own tomatoes. The next best is to get them at the farmer's market. And uh, locally grown is really important. So I have dry bread, uh, rinsed onions, and salted tomatoes all ready to um, t turn up. I could put a little bit of balsamico on the tomatoes. A lot of Italian cooks like sugar on their tomatoes and balsamic is adding a little bit of sugar to the tomatoes, but not too much because it's too sweet. Now I'm adding some red wine vinegar to, the, to everything. And now that uh, an extra virgin olive oil. Now this is fresh basil that I, I bought from a farmer. And what I do is I take the leaves and tear them by hand. So basil is, will oxidize if it's cut or torn. So this should be the last thing you do because you don't want it, the basil to turn black. So I'm just making some leaves like this. My chicken it is, uh, is cooked. It's actually one I cooked earlier. So I had two chickens, one that's uh, for later and one for now. And I've taken the chicken out and I'm letting it, um, I'm letting the chicken rest for a few minutes, okay? And look at this, okay? Clean hands, clean hands. This is more tomatoes than most people put in panzanella, but it's what I want to do. Clean hands and I'm letting them, the bread soak in with the onions, tomatoes, basil, and olive oil. How does that look? Mm -hmm. Okay, look at how good that looks. Doesn't that look good? Be sure and taste it to see if it has enough salt, pepper, and olive oil. And now I'm going to cut up my chicken. So I'm just moving that back. I'm using the board here. And I'm going to take my hot pads and take my bricks off. Do -do, do -do. What you want to look for when you're, when you're looking at the chicken is you want to make sure there's no little red spaces in there. If, it's, if it looks red under the arm, or the wing, then uh, put it back, put it in the oven for a few minutes. This is actually a different chicken, one I made earlier. And look at this, I'm gonna take the chicken off of this grill pan and put it onto a board like this. Ooh la la, that looks good, okay. Remember I cut the fat off of the chicken? So mostly what's in this pan is juices. So I'm gonna add the chicken juices to my salad over here. <laughs> that is a thousand dollars worth of information. That's what's going to make your chicken taste, your salad taste so good. I'm going to toss it one more time and make sure that all the, the chicken juices, the salt and pepper and olive oil are in, are in there together. And so I'm going to serve everybody some of this um, salad with a piece of chicken on top. So I'm lifting the legs and cutting the leg like this. I'm lifting the leg and cutting the leg like this. As I said before, if it's a little pink, put it back in the oven for a few minutes. I'm cutting the breast in half this way. And these are just regular kitchen shears, nothing special. This is gonna make you hungry, watch this. Juicy tomatoes, basil, olive oil, and, and country bread going onto a plate. Use your fingers to make sure there's plenty of tomatoes and bread. And then a piece of chicken kind of off to the side. Never serve food on the edge of the plate. Look at that. Tuscan bread salad, panzanella, with chicken cooked under a brick. I would serve it with red wine outdoors in the month of August. I'm Mary Risley from Tante Marie's Cooking School in San Francisco. For more recipes, go to tantemarie.com for recipes and videos. Thank you for watching.